Hi guys, um, my name is Gilbert Cho, and I will be, let me go ahead and show you this file first. Uh, this one. There you go. Um, I will be talking to you today about biological control of plant pathogens. Um, so to begin with, uh, what is biocontrol, which is the main word for what we are going to be talking about. Uh, so biocontrol of plant pathogens is basically the practice whereby biological methods are used to decrease or eradicate the population of uh, plant-related infections or pathogens or, and generally decrease the amount of disease being caused to the plants. Um, some common plant pathogens would include fungi, fungi-like organisms, bacterial, phytoplasmas, and uh, virus amongst many others, obviously. Um, there are several mechanisms of biological control, of biologically controlling plant pathogens, of which <clears throat> we are gonna be uh, elaborating just on three of them for this video. I mean, obviously you can talk longer or more than just three. Um, we'll be talking about competition, uh, antibiosis, and hyperparasitism, which are now some mechanisms, this mechanisms of biocontrol, uh, competition, which you would generally just say uh, is like parasitism, commensalism, it's related to that. Um, competition would just be where excessive growth of a single plant grows and like colonizes the other plant pathogen or fun fungi and basically eradicate that pathogen that causes disease to the uh, plant. Um, so in this case, the growth of one plant would inhibit the growth of another plant or microorganism that will cause an infection to the plant. And we see antibiosis where it includes, it's like separated into different uh, terms or like subheadings, which includes uh, antibiotics, bio bacteria, bactericins and uh, volatile compounds. This, comp this components basically just inhibit the growth of plant pathogens in general, just generally speaking. And hyperparasitism, which uh, is one thing I really found interesting uh, in this research, um, where one organism basically, which is a parasite, basically causes or like kills another parasite, like a parasite living on a parasite. So like hyper parasitism, like a super parasite. All right, so we are gonna deep dive into competition where most biocontrol agents are fast growing and turn to compete with the plant pathogens for organic nutrients and space as well as minerals. So basically um, most of these pathogens obviously are mostly living organisms too and they live their day-to-day -day life uh, depending on these nutrients from the soil and from uh, minerals from the plant just to live. And um, most aerobic and facultative anaerob anaerobic microorganisms respond to low ion containing uh, environments by producing extracellular agents called uh, cytorospore. Now, basically, um, cytorospore are cytorospore producing strands used Cytoros for complexes in the plant roots that uh, thereby restricting the growth of deleterious microorganisms at the root level of the plant, thereby um, causing low iron content in the soil. Where it's, so these microorganisms, the, this pathogens depend on, and they cannot if they if they don't have this micro this nutrients, this micronutrients like iron, they, they cannot survive. So that's a good way to kind of eradicate the plant pathogens by basically taking away from taking away from them what they need to survive. And um, moving on to, uh, we're going to be di diving deep into antibiosis, where remember I mentioned was basically three different categories of it. Uh, firstly, we'll be talking about the antibiotics. 
which basically just inhibits the growth of microorganisms by targeting the metabolism of the microorganisms and shutting down the metabolisms, thereby killing them because they need them. Uh, they need they need that process to grow and reproduce. Uh, for example, Trichoderma viridae colonizes pea plants, resulting in the accumulation of antibiotics like viridin in the seed, which prevents the growth of uh, this plant pathogen uh, caused by bacterial Pythium ultimum, which is a bacterial causing uh, infection to plants. So basically killing that plantogen and saving the plant. Now going to bactericins, basically bactericins on the other hand are antibiotic-like. They're not exactly considered as antibiotic, but they basically function almost like antibiotics. And they are very, they are more specific. I would say they're more specific and uh, they're, they kill specific bacteria. So they are generally just specific in their action compared to antibiotics. Antibiotics sometimes could be general where you have a single antibiotics um, killing a wider range of uh, like a broad spectrum antibiotic. Then we go down to volatile compound. An example of volatile compound here would be ammonia, which you will see mentioned in there. Um, these are like compounds that basically mediate antibiosis in general, which has been observed to control uh, solid barn pathogens in plants. Uh, for example, the Enterobacter cloacae prevents the growth of Pythium ultimum and Rhizotonia solani. And the volatile compound, uh, as I mentioned, mentioned earlier, was ammonia, where it basically attaches to it and causes um, this amazing function. Um, moving on to hyperparasitism, which is basically the most common, is most commonly found in fungi that form uh, sl sclerotia. And uh, sclerotia is basically a dense mass of a pathogenic hyphae. This is like in the rhizosphere, the root system of the plant. and that remains in the crop after even after they die and basically cause infection to future crops or plants. And this cycle just continues by this is like a tr cross trends, um, how would I say it? Just a transmission of uh, this infection from one plant to another from generation to generation. Um, an example of this would be the soil fungus, uh, corneothyrium minithens, many times as a potential microparasite of a uh, slurotinia. And some importance of biocontrol of plant pathogens would uh, include, uh, first of all, I, I just wanted to mention some uh, bacterial component of plant pathogens would include Sotomonas uh, fluorescens and Bacillus subtilis. Um, Biocontrol of plant pathogens are least uh, costly and cheaper than most other control of plants. And usually they are considered very healthy to the environment because they, they don't cause any toxic, usually to, um, most of the time they, they don't cause any toxic effects to the plant, like side effects compared to other um, biocontrol pathogens or or other methods of control of plant pathogens. And um, they're pretty safe to the plant and not just to the plant, but also the users of the biocontrol methods. And finally, there are also, they are generally environmentally friendly. And uh, unlike, in my conclusion, unlike biocontrol of insects where you would see pesticides and just more harsh chemicals to the environment. Biocontrol of plant pathogens are made from environmentally friendly material. Like you would use a, a, a parasite which is already in the environment and, and it becomes a hyperparasite to another parasite. And that generally does not cause any harm to the environment because they already are adapted and like they're already functioning in that environment. Um, some sources of this environmental friendly um, plant pathogen 
bio control plant pathogens would be like they, you could get them from animals, fungi, and bacterial, uh, also from some certain minerals. Um, I got my reference page here. And finally, questions. Please, please go ahead and post your questions uh, on the, the comments section. It should be the comment section, and uh, I'll love to answer them. And thank you very much for listening. Hopefully, that did not sound very ridiculous. I don't have the best of voices. Thank you. <laughs>